when I was, when I first received the immense honor of the invitation to preach this afternoon, the first thing I did was to look up the gospel passage for the day, hoping that it would be one that would not be too difficult to preach about. And I was absolutely delighted when I saw the, what the gospel passage was, that marvelous passage from the Gospel of Mark, because it contains a question and a principle which I think lie at the very heart of Boston College and Boston College High School, and indeed of all of Catholic education, and certainly of all Jesuit education. The question is, who do you say that I am? And the principle, well, I'll wait for that. The question, first of all, who do you say that I am? Peter, of course, gives the answer, you are the Christ. But what exactly does that mean? What does Peter mean when he says, you are the Christ? What does that term carry in Peter's imagination? What did it mean to the earliest Christians? What has it meant for the last 2,000 years? Very different things in different contexts. The church has continually found new and perhaps clearer ways of saying what it means. What do we mean when we, when we are asked, what do you say about me? Well, the Catholic tradition says that Christ is the one in whom we find the fullness of divinity Everything that it means to say that the Father is God, we say also of the Son, who is incarnate in Jesus. But not only do we find the full divinity, but we find full humanity. That when we look to Jesus, we see one who is like us in everything except sin. So what we are saying in response to that question, who do you say that I am, is we say you are the one who shows us that the fullness of divinity is to be found in a human being. And the fullness of humanity is to be glimpsed only when we see the reality of God. What we are saying in answer to that question is that in Christ we see full humanity and full divinity, and that they are never separated, but never confused, never in competition with one another. Now, if you take that seriously, and the Jesuit tradition takes it very seriously indeed, if you take it seriously, then what we are saying in answer to the question, who do you say that I am, is that if you want to know what it means to say the word God, look at this person. Look at the life, death, and destiny of Jesus of Nazareth. And at the same time, if you want to know what it is to be a human being, if you want to know who you and I are or could be at our very fullest and best, look at Jesus of Nazareth, that we see the fullness of humanity revealing the fullness of divinity. Now, what follows from that? What follows from it is an all-important principle. And the principle is that if you really want to be like God, and that's about as good a definition of holiness as I know. If you really want to be like God, be as human as you can possibly be. Because the perfectly human is the realization of the presence of the perfectly divine. That the fullness of God is found in the fullness of humanity and vice versa. And what flows from that is the all-important principle of all of Catholic education, which is that anything that helps us to become 
more fully, richly, perfectly, splendidly human is making us more like God. Whatever humanizes, divinizes. Whatever makes us more human makes us holy. That is the very core of the whole of the Catholic and Jesuit traditions of education. Because if you think about it, it explains why we think that education is a holy work. That it's not just a nice thing that the church does to take care of people, but somewhat secondary in its genuine mission. What we are saying is that if education means humanization, then education is central to the church's mission. Because education is simply the long process by which we become more truly and authentically human. So whatever humanizes, divinizes. Not just the teaching of religion, not just the teaching of philosophy, but the teaching of chemistry, of physics, of history, of economics, the training of nurses, the teaching of teachers, that all education makes us more like God. Because whatever makes us more human makes us holy, makes us more like the fullness of God's presence. Now, if that's true, then think of what a blessing to the church the Jesuit tradition is. As a non-Jesuit, I can say this, because many of my Jesuit colleagues might find it embarrassing to do so. Virtually everyone here today is directly or perhaps indirectly the recipient of the blessing of the tradition of St. Ignatius and all, his, all of his associates in the Society of Jesus for almost half a millennium. It is a privilege to have been educated by the people of the Society of Jesus. It is an honor to collaborate with them. It is a privilege to be their associate. All of us owe a debt of staggering gratitude for 150 years, indeed for almost 500 years, of the Jesuit tradition. And it is a great, great, great privilege to be able to stand here and say that to my Jesuit colleagues. Thank you. And the reason that that Jesuit tradition is so priceless and so powerful is because it's so Catholic. You see, that's what lies at the heart of Catholicism. The conviction that we are engaged in making one another holy by making one another more completely human. And therefore, nothing is foreign to us. There's no question which we have to be afraid of asking. No position that we need be frightened of exploring. No task that we need be too daunted to undertake. And that brings me to the conclusion of the gospel passage. When Jesus says in Mark's gospel, enunciates a principle which we find again and again throughout the gospels, especially the synoptic gospels. It's Jesus saying to us, if you hold on to your life, if you try to preserve your life, if you grasp your life and will not let it go, you will lose it. But if you give it away, if you hand it over, if you are willing to die, you will discover that you cannot run out of life. If you hold on to it, you lose it. If you give it away, it becomes everlasting. As I edge ever so gingerly through late middle age, 
I find that there are certain key issues which have become absolutely central to me. There aren't as many things as I once thought was, were important, but those things that I still do think are crucially important are now unshakably central to my life. And one of them is that claim. What you hold on to, you lose. What you give away, you can never run out of. Let me suggest to you that that applies to our education as well. If you think of your education as a gift given you to be grasped, as something that you've achieved and will hold on to, if you think of your education as a training to make more money or get a better job, if you think that your education is all about your success in being able to provide for yourself and your family, all of which are great and wonderful goods, but if you think that's what's central to your education, then I must say that I think you're unworthy of your education. The reason to be educated is to teach somebody else. You never fully grasp the fruits of your education until you give it away to another. The measure of the success of your education at Boston College or Boston College High School is the measure to which people who never got to come to Boston College, the measure to which their lives are richer, fuller, more genuinely human, because you did go to Boston College. That it's enabling you to give something to others. And in that process, for the first time, you will fully possess it. You never own what you don't give away. And what you do give away, you can never lose. Now, maybe that's not true. But if it's not true, then nothing in the gospel is true. Because that's what the gospel is. It is the story of the fullness of God present in a perfectly human, human being. And the way in which he gave everything till there was nothing left to give. Father, it, I hand myself over to you. It is finished. He's all used up. There's nothing left and the tomb can't hold him. He cannot not live because he has given away everything. To be able to give away everything is what all of us are in training to do from the moment of our baptism. And in doing it, we become a little more human. And in becoming a little more human, we become genuinely holy. If I had to describe, give one image for everything that Catholic education, that Jesuit education, that Boston College as a seat of education are about, it would be the very last canto of the Divine Comedy. Dante, who of course gets everything right, Dante describes in that last canto, the hundredth canto, he describes what can't be described. He tries to describe the beatific vision. He tries to describe what it is to see God. And needless to say, he fails. He just fails less than anybody else who's ever tried. Dante says that what he saw was a dazzling light that's a familiar image for the presence of God. But he goes on to say that that dazzling light, which seemed to destroy his sight, but in fact was steadily making his eyes stronger and clearer, that that light seemed to emanate from three concentric spheres of different colors, together forming one dazzling white light, an image, of course, of the Trinity. And as his 
sight grew stronger, he could gaze more deeply into that light. And in its very center, he saw one who looked just like him. He sees the incarnation. He sees the fullness of humanity united to the divinity in the person of Christ. And then, he says in that dazzling last line, then I knew the love that moves the sun and all the stars. Well, you see, it is by discovering that what unites us with God is our humanity. That thanks to the incarnation, you and I and God have one thing in common. We're all human. And therefore, if you wish to be like God, be more human. And the way to be more human is to help others to be more human, to give yourself away. To discover that is to have discovered everything that is important in the Christian tradition. It is to genuinely be educated. It is to be the kind of person that the Society of Jesus has been forming for five centuries. It is to be people who see the love that moves the sun and all the stars. That's the gift that has been given to us by Boston College. Give it away. <laughs>